Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will learn about advanced string formatting in Python with f-strings, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I've got VS Code open, you can see in the file tree I have a Lesson 13 folder. Let's create a new file inside this folder called f underscore strings dot pi. Now, as we talk about f-strings, we're going to learn what we have been doing with strings and what we could do to format strings that might be better. So what I want to do first is just paste in an example of something from the previous tutorial, and we'll look at how this is put together. So we have a variable that says person, then we've got a variable of coins, and you can see we concatenate everything in this string. We're using four plus symbols to create one string. It starts with the new line character as we see the slash n, then we have the value of person, and each time we insert a value, we essentially have to wrap it in plus symbols to concatenate it to the rest of the values of the string, where we see has right here inside of quotes, and then at the end we have coins left inside of quotes. And now today, we're going to learn a better way to do this. But before we get to F strings, let's cover some ways that used to be used to format strings that could still be used, but F strings are potentially better. However, it's good to know the older ways because you may see those in code, code examples that were created previously. So let's look at another example of this same string, but we're going to use the percent %s method of formatting the string. So I'll start out with well, let's create a message first, and then we'll just print the message. So I'll say message equals, then I'll start with a quote, and we can put in our new line character, and then we're going to put in a percent %s, and we don't really need the space, but I want you to see the separation of these two as they're different characters. So let me remove that space, but the percent %s marks where we're going to put the person value. After that, we'll say has, and then percent %s again to mark where we're going to put the coins value, and then we'll say coins left. So that's a little easier to read so far, but then we need to put another percent and then parentheses, and at the end, we'll put in person and coins. Now what this does is it inserts person where the first percent %s is and inserts coin where the second is, and you need to keep these in order. If we flip them around, it would insert coins first. So after this, let's just print the message, and we'll save our file, and I'll go to the drop menu here and choose Run Python File. And you see we've got Dave has three coins left, and again, Dave has three coins left. So two different ways of creating the same string. We had been concatenating with the plus symbol, but this appears to be just a little bit easier than what we've been doing. But again, this is an older way of doing this, and there are newer ways. So we'll continue to move forward and cover those. First, I want to move this to the right once again, as you've seen me do before. So go to the View menu in VS Code, Appearance, and then Align Panel, and no a Panel Position. There we go, and move that to the right. So we'll just see our output over here. I'm also going to press Control and the letter B to hide the file tree. So we can see more of our code here on the left, and then eventually Alt and the letter Z. So anytime our code is longer and running off the screen still, it will wrap down instead to this next line. So now let's look at another newer method than using the percent %s, and that is to use the format method. So I'm going to highlight our last example, press Control C to copy, and then just underneath Control V to paste this. And I'm going to change this string to use the format method approach. And so now we're still going to start with the slash n for a new line, but then we'll no longer have a percent %s here. Instead, we're going to put in the curly brace, and I'll just delete that percent %s. So now you see the slash n, and then the opening and closing curly brace, or brackets. Some people call them curly braces, some call them curly brackets, either way. And then I put a space here just so you can see the separation once again, because this is what we're talking about. But I really don't want a space at the beginning, so I'll remove it. I just want you to see the separation of the new line character versus the opening and closing brackets. Once again, we'll use the same thing here instead of the next percent %s. So we have these opening and closing curly brackets indicating where we're going to insert our values. And then at the end here, we won't use the percent either. Instead, we'll use dot notation to chain on to the end of the string value. We'll chain dot format, which calls this method 
and then we'll pass in person and coins to the format method. So let's save this and run our code once again. And now we see the same output again. So another way of achieving the same format of our string, but now we're using the format method. However, there are some other things we can do with this format method. So let me once again highlight both of these. This time, instead of Control C, I'll tell you another way to do this, and that is to press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow, and it will make a copy right underneath, and then I'll just press Enter one time to create that space. Now, we're still going to use the format method, but we can put in index numbers to say which position of the value is going in. So I'm going to flip these around, and I'm going to put one here instead of zero, and I'll put zero here. But that means I'll want to flip these values as well. So it will start with a zero, and then it will end with the one. So we'll want to put person here where the one is because it has the index of one. And we'll put coins where the zero is because it has the index of zero. So if we save, run our code again, we get the same output. But now we can essentially not track the order of these. If we want to flip those around and then insert the values by which number they are as far as the index inside of the format method, we can do that. And remember, the index starts with zero, so we refer to coins as zero and person as one. But there's even more we can do with the format method, so I'll scroll up just a little bit. I'll highlight this example, and once again, shift, alt, and the down arrow to copy it down. And now let's refer to these as the names that they have, but we're going to have to do something else inside of the format method as well. So here I'm going to put person, and here I'm going to put coins, but now we actually assign these values inside the format method here. So I'm going to say coins equals coins, and likewise person equals person. So now we're setting the values of these parameters essentially for the format method and then it will pull them in here by name. So let's save once again, run our code, and we get the same output again. And I can see VS Code brought this down to the next line and that's okay. You could even have your closing brace on the last line if you want to. And we have the opening one here. This will still run the same. Okay, before we move on from format, let's look at one more example. So I'm going to highlight all of this again, shift, alt, and the down arrow, move it down, and I'll press enter about three times now because I need just a little more space. I want to create a dictionary here. So I'm going to say player is going to hold our dictionary. There we start with curly braces for a dictionary. I'm going to define person inside of the dictionary, and I'll just assign person my name, Dave, and then coins. And then I'll give coins a value of three here, but this is all inside of a dictionary. Now we can still refer to person and coins inside of our string, but what I'm going to do here is put in, and I can get rid of the extra returns here, so format's all on the same line again, but I can put in the dictionary and I just start it with two asterisks and then put in player. And it's going to pull these values in from the dictionary based on what we have assigned the keys here as the person is a key and coins is a key for the values of Dave and three. So let's once again run our code and we see the same output once again. So a dictionary could actually shorten that up because then we just use two asterisks and the name of the dictionary, which is player in this one, to pass into the format method, and then it pulls those out based on the key names. So when we talk about these different ways of formatting strings, we have to look at why have we moved on to newer methods. I, even format is an older method than the F string, which is what we're going to learn next, and that's what you want to use going forward. But when we look back at this percent method, let's talk about what works for it, and it does work, but what doesn't work is this can get complicated quickly. So you see percent %s everywhere. You've got all these percent signs. And imagine if you had more values to pass in. What if you had 10 values? This just gets longer and longer as you pass in the values. Now, as you might guess, the same with the format approach here, as we pass things in, except for the dictionary at least, but as we pass things in, it was also getting longer and longer if we had more values to pass in. But format gave us a little bit more control here with the index numbers or with the name references 
than we had with the percent method. But we can shorten all of this up and it won't be so verbose if we use F strings. So now that we're ready to move on to F strings, let me scroll up for some more room and I'll put in a little break so you see it in the source code and know when we have moved on to F strings. And notice my Mandalorian reference, this is the way. So here we're going to have a message. So we'll define our message once again, and then equals, and we'll start with the letter F and lowercase is what I usually use. And then let's go ahead and put in the new line character. And then let's refer to our person, which remember was defined above as well. Before we put it inside of a dictionary here, we had actually defined person and coins here at the very top of the file. So we're referring to that. And after our person, we can just say has, and then coins, and that's referring to the coins definition at the top as well, and coins left. Now, that's a lot shorter, isn't it? We're just inserting the values of those variables, but we're starting out with the letter F to indicate this is an F string. So let's print message and save. And now let's run our code once again. And we once again see the same output. Not nearly as verbose. We don't have to add anything at the end of the string or insert values into a method. We just use the letter F at the beginning and then we insert the values we want inside of curly braces inside the string. Now I want to highlight the fact that we do not have to necessarily insert these predetermined variable values as well. So let's copy this down once again. And now instead of coins, I'll leave person there, but we could pass in an equation like two times five and this will work. So if we run the code now, we should see the difference and it says Dave has 10 coins down here at the bottom of our output. And I'll copy this once again to show we can actually use methods inside of this as well. So in this example, I'm going to say person and then dot lower. So if you remember our string methods we learned, this should make everything lowercase. So Dave should be lowercase now in this new output. And if I run this, yes, Dave is lowercase on the bottom line. So you can see we can do things inside of these curly braces besides just passing in a value. So let's look at one more example here. And remember our player dictionary above where we have player with person and coins as the keys. Let's come down here and we'll use that. So I'm going to copy this down with shift alt and the down arrow. And now inside of our curly braces, Going to do this just a little differently. We'll refer to player, our dictionary, and then we'll use brackets. And then we need to put the key inside of quotes. So we'll use person. Now it's important to note that I'm using a double quote out here and then single quotes in here. If I had single quotes out here, this wouldn't work with single quotes. We would get an error. So if you wrap your string in double quotes, then you can use single quotes inside. So here we've got player, person, and we could refer to player coins as well, but I'll just leave the two point or two times five right there. Let's go ahead and run the code. And once again, we have Dave has 10 coins left. So you see how we can insert different things inside of these curly braces, and it still doesn't make our string much longer, not much more verbose, if you will, which means adding more code. We're trying to minimize code and F strings do a great job of that compared to the previous methods of inserting values into strings. Now, I also want to share that you can pass options into these F strings. So I'll put another line here in our code with a comment just saying you can pass formatting options so you'll know what this is an example of. Let's start out with a variable that is equal to the number 10, and now we'll print an F string. And so I'll start with F once again, and then I'm going to use a new line character. Then I'm going to say 2.25 times, and I'll insert the number value. So times 10 in this case is, and now we'll have a bracket here for the result. And I'll say 2.25 times num, but I want to put some formatting on this so I get a fixed decimal. So I'm going to start with a colon, and all formatting will start with this to indicate then you're going to say how to format it. I'm going to say 0.2 to indicate I want two decimals, and this F stands for fixed. So now I'll go ahead and save this string, and we'll run the code once again, and we get 2.25 times 10 is 22.5. And remember, we wanted two decimals, so that's why we see the zero at the end. 
Now this is just one of many examples of how to format, and I'm going to show you where to find more of those here in just a minute as well. But first I want to highlight that you can also put this in a loop. So now let's copy this line down at least. I'll just highlight that and shift alt in the down arrow. And then I'll press enter a couple of times and I'm going to say for num in range. And I want to go 1 through 11, so I get 10 numbers, if you remember how we covered range. Now I need to indent this, or we'll have that error, because remember, the indentations in Python are important. So we're going to loop through this, so you should see this print several times. Let me go ahead and remove the new line character, because this will allow each line to at least have an output there, so it doesn't take up our full screen like this does. I can go ahead and put a new line character here at the end of this one, so at least we see the separation before our loop starts. So now let's go ahead and run this same code and see what we get. And you can see we've got 10 different lines of output here for the numbers 1 through 10. If you remember the range here, once we reach 11 is when it stops. It doesn't put 11 into this loop as well. So we've got 2.25 times 1 is 2.25, and it goes all the way through 10, giving us the result of each one. Now let's look at one more example of this. So I can copy this down, but then I'm going to change the value. So shift alt and the down arrow one more time. And now in this one, we're going to use the same range. I'm going to switch some things around. So I'm going to say num, then I'm going to say divided by and then we'll have 2.25 is, and then we'll go ahead and put what we're calculating here. So I'm going to have num divided by, and you know what, let's change this number. I want to do something that always gives us some type of decimal output. So I'll just say like 4.52. So let's make it 4.52 here. 4.52, there we go. Now, not the letter M, there we go. So now we need our colon, and we'll have a period, and then I'm going to have the number two, but I, instead of this fixed place, I wanna have a percent. So it's going to put a percent output. It's still going to have two decimal points though, and that's what we're going to see for our output here. I'll go ahead and save this, and let's look at the output of this loop as well. So now we have one divided by 4.52 is 22.12%. Essentially, it is one would be 22.12% of 4.52. As you can see, as we get closer to four, it gets closer to 100%. And as we go beyond four, it's over 100%. Eventually, where 10 divided by 4.52 is over 200%. So we're getting the output expected, and that's kind of showing you how to loop through and format a string and get those results as you go. Okay, I'm on the W3Schools website, and I'm on the Python string format method, which I said was one of the older methods, but you can still use the formatting options that I was talking about, even if you're using the older format method. So this is where they have this current information. And I'm going to, of course, include this link in the course resources and in the description of this video. So I'll scroll down here, and where I want you to see is down here when it says formatting types. And it starts to show all of these examples, and it shows what, or it says what they do, and it gives little try it buttons where it will launch a code playpen for you to try all of that out. And you can see there are so many different ones. Here we used the percent one, and before we used the fixed point number format in my examples, but there are many others that you can try out as well. So I'll put this link inside of the course resources. I'm back in VS Code, and you can see I've created a new file named RPS6, which is our rock, paper, scissors game, and I've pulled in the code from the previous lesson on closures, and that was our RPS5 version. So right now, I essentially have the ending code from the previous lesson that was in the RPS5.py file. So now we can apply some F strings to modify our rock, paper, scissors game. And there's a few lines that actually need them. So let's go take a look and we'll scroll down here to line 33. And you can see on line 33 and 34, we've got some longer strings and VS Code's wrapping one kind of strangely as well. Let's first hide the file tree once again with control B. We can see this a little bit better. And let's modify the first one. So we'll start with the letter F once again here. 
And now we don't have to use the plus symbol to concatenate this string. So let's highlight everything we have right here from the extra quote and the plus symbol and instead put a curly brace. And now we just need to find where the end of this string we're creating is and we're chaining the replace method and the title method. So the end is really right here after title. So let's put our curly brace there. Then let's delete the plus symbol and the extra quote as well. And now it looks like we have made a full string here that's a little tidier by using an F string. So now let's do the same thing and maybe VS Code will like what we're doing better and will not wrap this down in a strange way. So we'll start with the letter F here and we'll have Python chose and then we'll highlight the quote and the plus symbol once again and instead we'll put a curly brace. Now let's get rid of this weird space VS Code has added. And now we'll be going to the end here. So here's the replace and the title. So at the end of the title, we'll put another curly brace. That looks better already. Now let's delete the plus symbol and the quote as well. And now we have the period and then another new line character and that's all fine. So let's save. And well, VS Code wrapped it down, but I like where it wrapped things better because now after the parentheses for the print, we just have this long F string. So let's go ahead and move this closing parentheses down the next line as well and save. And that formats quite a bit better. And you can have that opening and closing parentheses on separate lines. And then our F string is all on one line as well. And now let's scroll down to line 63. And we have these different outputs here for the game count, player wins, and Python wins. And you can see we're still concatenating a value. So let's once again make these F strings. I'll just start all three of those with the letter F. Now we can highlight the quote and the plus symbol, delete those and start with the curly brace. And really, if I highlight one and press control D, it will highlight the next as well. I'll press backspace to change both at the same time and then add the opening curly brace to both at the same time as well. So that's nice. Afterwards, we need to put a bracket here in between these two parentheses. So we could, of course, highlight both and then Control D and Control D. Now we've selected all three. I'll arrow to the right to go to the end and then arrow to the left once. And there I'm in the middle of all three. And so then I'm going to add that closing cursor as well. And after that, we need to put a closing quote. So now we have a full F string in each one of these print statements and we can save the file. And now let's try our game out just to make sure everything is working as expected. We'll choose run Python file here and it's asking us to play. We'll make a choice. I chose rock and everything looks like it works as expected even though we lost the game. So let's play one more time. We don't like to quit when we're losing and we still lost, maybe again. We'll keep going with rock and Python's beating us every time. But we finally won on the fourth game and everything works as expected. So now you know how to use F strings and we've applied those to our rock, paper, scissors game. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.